Let's talk about what's going on in the world of government supported schemes for the minorities. India, from being the world's largest democracy with over a billion citizens and being culturally rich amongst all nuclear powers combined together, to being adversely poor in terms of socio economic fund for its minorities. For the last six years, the indifferences amongst minorities have been on an all-time high. Nationalistic sentiments are being questioned openly, with respect to religious beliefs leading to biasness amongst one's equal. Minorities have been led to believe they need to fend for themselves as the government is bent to take away the liberty they were born into. This is Macy and this video will cover just one part of various schemes under the welfare of minority, hoping to educate saturated minds, hoping to open their eyes to possibilities. The status of women in the country particularly those from the disadvantaged sections of the society has been unfavorable. A girl child suffers from discrimination even before birth and after birth in the allocation of household resources such as food, education, access to basic health care. Most women in the rural areas suffer from double burden of carrying out less quantifiable work like cooking, fetching water, sending children to school, along with agricultural labor like feeding cattle, milking cows, while the men folk perform defined activities like selling milk and grains produced by the very household. Women in the minority communities fare badly as well. They are not just a minority but the marginalized majority who have been sidelined in decision making in the families usually cut off from the full involvement of the workings of their community. Empowering such women is not only essential for equity but also constitutes a critical element in our fight for poverty reduction, economic growth and strengthening of our civic society from within. Women and children are always the worst sufferers in the poverty-stricken family and need our support. Empowering women, especially mothers, is even more important as it is in such homes that she nourishes, nurtures and molds the character of her offspring. A report of a high-level committee on social, economic and educational status of Muslim community had highlighted the fact that India's largest minority group, the Muslims, have been left out of the development trajectory and within this group, Muslim women have been undoubtedly left behind. Keeping this in view, the Ministry of Minority Affairs had formulated Nai Roshni. The objective was to empower and instill confidence amongst minority women, including their neighbors from other communities living in the same locality, by providing knowledge, tools, and techniques for interacting with government systems, banks, and other institutions at all levels. The Ministry of Minority Affairs, with the help of specialized educational consultants, structured the training within two types, non-residential leadership development training, and residential leadership development training. Within the non-residential training program, the training shall be conducted in the village or the locality by using existing facilities or rented permanent structures. The duration of the training shall be for six days. Each day will be of six hours. Each batch of 25 trainees will be trained separately. Care should be taken to ensure that the dates for training are fixed in order to avoid any religious or festive occasions and demands of the season. Printed training material in local language would be prepared by the organization, which is the principal implementation agency, within the framework of the training modules. 
to incentivize training course and partial compensations would be given to the selected women trainees along with a meal and a crutch arrangement for the children while the training is ongoing during the day. Selected eligible women would be imparted leadership training and economic empowerment non-presidential training program. The implementing agency would open the account in the banks for those women trainees who do not have their own accounts. At least two-thirds of the trainers engaged by the organization shall be women and they should be able to deliver their inputs in the local language of the area on the topics given in the training module. Under the residential leadership development training, selected eligible women would be imparted leadership training in residential training institutes. For approving residential trainings and training institutes of organization, the institute concerned must have boarding and lodging arrangements for at least 25 women in a secure location. The duration of the training shall be for five days and each day will be of seven hours. Each batch of 25 trainees will be trained separately. Printed training material in local language will be prepared by the organization within the framework of training modules and uploaded on the portal. Care should be given to ensure that the dates for training are fixed to avoid any religious festive occasions. The entire training fees, the training materials, boarding and food refreshments and travel expenses would be covered under the scheme. The trainees would also be given an allowance for the duration of the training period. The implementing agency would open the account in the banks for those women trainees who do not have their own accounts. The overall training programs cover nine basic issues and are subject as training modules within the program, covering advocacy for social and, and behavioral change, digital literacy, educational empowerment, financial systems, health and hygiene, leadership of women, legal rights to women, life skills, and Swatch Bharat. These modules provide a basic framework to develop training programs. However, specific training modules based on Local issues may be developed by the implementing agency within the given module framework in local language. The training module was structured in such a manner that the training inputs were given in short phases. The use of audio visual aids and case studies were used for making it more interesting and comprehensible. Qualities of leadership like organizational capacity, communication skills, self-development and articulation, communication and public speaking, organizing capabilities, negotiations, and conflict resolutions were all integral part of the training. Group exercises and discussions were incorporated in the training modules to encourage active participation and make the scheme livelier and more interactive. Experts were invited to speak on relevant issues as per the training program as well. These leadership development training schemes have been implemented by the Ministry of Minority Affairs, being the principal implementing agency through project implementation agencies. These selected agencies implement the project directly through an existing organizational setup in the locality. The onus of implementing the project properly successfully would rest with the organization assigned with the work by the ministry. Stringent requirements were adopted for the selection of implementing agencies to ensure that they have the capacity and are highly motivated, dedicated and committed to the welfare of women and working in the field for women. These agencies were required to have a requisite personnel, financial viability and infrastructure to operate at the grass root level for the implementation of Nairoshni. The organization must be duly registered and should have been in operation for a minimum of three years. They should be financially viable and not have any deficit account during the last three years. For this, duly audited annual accounts of the last three years had to be uploaded on an online application management system which was provided by the Ministry of Minority Affairs. The organization had to have undertaken at least one project exclusively for development of women 
evidence to that effect should be uploaded on the online application management system. Preference were to be given to local ground level organizations which were certified by the district collector, our local bodies and local authorities that such organization has worked in that area for women development projects and delivered good results. The organization had to have at least three key training personnel who should at least be a graduate. A list of all key training personnel containing containing the names, gender, educational qualification, area of expertise, number of years and types of experience, their full postal address and contact numbers should also be added should also be added within the online application management system. The organization should not have been backlisted by the government or any government attached department or agency. The organization head should not have been convicted for any criminal offense. For that, an affidavit certified by the notary had to be provided. In case of residential trainings for trainees, the organization must have the requisite residential boarding facilities, the training space, toilets, which should be sufficient for at least 25 trainees. The safety of trainees must be of prime importance. All the implementation agencies are required to register on the online application management system of Nairoshni and get the ID and password for login. The registration of the organization will be done only once. After registration, the organization are required to upload the information on the online application management system and submit their application online for processing. In a matter of full disclosure, the documents required to be scanned and uploaded on the online application management system requires the number of years of existence and operations of the organization, documents pertaining to the number of projects implemented by the organization for development of women, performance record of the institution evaluated by any recognized agency, the number of projects implemented by the organization in their region, the number of key personnel working for the organization with undergraduate or postgraduate degree in social work, the number of field women workers working for the organization, the number of projects undertaken by the organization. Once proposals have been submitted, the organizations fulfilling the eligibility norms of the ministry would be examined by the ministry and placed before the sanctioning committee. The members of the sanctioning committee comprise of an additional secretary Joint Secretary, Ministry of Minority Affairs, dealing with the scheme as the chairperson, supported by the Joint Secretary and Financial Advisor, Ministry of Minority Affairs, representative of the Ministry of Women and Child Development as a member, and a representative Ministry of Rural Development as a member, a director, a deputy secretary, or an under secretary ministry from the Ministry of Minority Affairs, dealing with this scheme as a convener and member. To qualify for the payments, the organization need to submit proposal through online application management system for a minimum of five batches of the locality level training. During the course, the organization would be entitled an amount of 6,000 rupees as an agency fees for one batch of non-residential locality trainings for services rendered towards proper, timely and successful implementation of the project. The agency fees admissible to the organization for non-residential locality training would cover items of expenditure of the organization on concurrent monitoring and reporting administrative cost and all other expenses required for implementation of the scheme. In respect to the residential training, an amount of 15,000 would be the entitlement of the agency fees for one batch of trainees. The following section will outline the financial norms under which the organization shall be provided financial assistance for implementation of the scheme. The itemized rates indicated for each type of training would be the maximum permissible cost that may be sanctioned for a batch of 25 women. Fees for engaging two faculty members totaling 9,000 rupees for a six-day period. Transportation cost for faculty members, 
for three separate occasions totaling 15,000 rupees. Lodging cost for faculty members totaling 6,000 rupees. Hiring of venue, furniture or crutch facility totaling 6,000 rupees for a six day period. Cost for one meal for trainee women 15,000. Cost for using audiovisual aids, participatory training kits, and taking audiovisual clips of different activities for reports, totaling 12,000 for a period of six days. Cost for distribution of training material, literature in local language and stationery, totaling 10,000 rupees. Allowance for women, 15,000 for a period of six days. Cost for motivation, identification and selection of eligible women, 1,250 rupees. Cost for handholding, nurturing for facilitators for project period including concurrent monitoring and reporting, totaling 9,600 rupees to be paid once a month for 12 months. Add agency fees, charges for one batch, totaling 6,000 rupees for a grand total, 1 lakh, 4,850 rupees. Similarly, the rates criteria for the residential leadership development training includes fees, boarding, food, totaling 1 lakh and 50,000 for a period of 5 days for a batch of 25 women, literature, printing, training material, information booklets copies of government schemes and programs, relevant laws and acts, totaling 15,000 for a batch of 25, indicative transport expenditure for a batch of 25 women, totaling 25,000, allowance for women, totaling 18,750 for a batch of 25 women for a period of 5 days, cost for motivation, identification and selection of eligible women, 1,250 rupees. Add agency charges for one batch of residential training totaling 15,000 which brings a grand total of 2,25,000 earmarked for the residential leadership development training. As a bonus source information, the project implementation agencies need to a certain criteria to fulfill the basic requirements for release of funds. Release of subsequent installments will be based on the various requirements to be fulfilled by the organization as the organization shall furnish an undertaking in the name of the competent authority responsible for actual implementation of the scheme, accepting the terms and conditions laid down by the Ministry of Minority Affairs and furnish a bond with two sureties which will also be responsible for furnishing of accounts of the grant sanction. Along with this, the organization shall maintain a separate account for the, for the financial assistance released by the Ministry of Minority Affairs and shall make the books of account available for as and when required. The organization shall utilize the financial assistance for specified purposes only. The organization shall give an undertaking that in the event of acting in contravention of this condition, it will refund the amount received from the government with 18% annual penal interest or the penal interest prescribed by the Chief Controller of Accounts. The organization shall be solely responsible for ensuring that women fulfilling the eligibility criteria are selected for training. The organization shall give an undertaking the books for this project will be open to inspection by the officers of the central government, concerned state government, or any charter counter authorized by the ministry. On completion of the project, the organization shall submit to the Ministry of Minority Affairs the utilization certificate and audited account certified by the charter counter, along with the following documents, through the online application management system, duly audited income and expenditure statement for a particular year including receipt and payment account of the organization in respect of funds received during the year. A certificate to the effect that the organization has not received any other grant for the same project from any other ministry 
and any other government organization. The organization shall erect at the venue of the training program banners, boards, indicating the date and venue of the training and that the training workshop is organized on behalf of the Ministry of Minority Affairs. The organization shall give prior information of the training program on the online application management system. The organization shall submit photographs, video clippings as evidence of holding the training program and workshops to the ministry through the online application management system. These shall also be hosted in the website of the organization. The organization shall submit copies of pamphlets, publicity material brought out in the local language in connection with the training program to the Ministry of Minority Affairs through the online application management system. The Government of India reserves the right to direct the organization for making any changes in the program or in the estimated cost. The Government shall also have the right to lay down any other conditions prior to the release of the grants in aid. The organization approved for implementation of the project proposal. In the villages, as far as possible, majority of the trainers deployed are women.